G'day, how you going? Be an Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. If you're new here, hit the thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll know when I'm posting new videos. Now today I'm doing a bit of a kitchen painting, you know, a bottle of wine, some cheese or grapes, biscuits, crackers, cheese board, the sort of thing you want to hang in your kitchen so when you're cooking you're in a great mood and you go, I like this kitchen. It's going to have a great vibe about it. It's all about the vibe in the painting. Now there's the size there. All right, I'll put that up there so you can write them down and also get some colors going up there. So there's going to be quite a few darks in this, but they're going to be complemented by the light colors that make it pop. All right, now this is a bit of an advanced beginner's painting, but no matter what level you are at, you're always welcome to give it a go and do your own way of it rendition of it or whatever okay so come on over here and we'll get into it all right so i've got the canvas on a portrait layout that's the way i want it now you can find a bottle of wine some grapes some cheese some crackers whatever and just put them together and use each subject as and make your own individual painting so i'm gonna have a bottle of wine and i'm gonna have it my own annapolis wine all right uh, since 1964 we'll probably have a slab of cheese here some grapes here and on a bit of a uh, cheese platter board now i'm going to paint the background in first because i want it to be kind of dark with a bit of light behind the actual subject here and then i'll bring things forward so this is a bit different to my usual method of painting landscapes and that now i've just got some craft white because i want to prime up the canvas with this using my flat brush and i'm just going to crisscross it now i don't have any retarder in here and i'm doing the background first so as i can bring the subject in front of the background so what i'm going to do i've got my lines there roughly just i'm just roughly going to paint all this around now it is a bit of a kitchen painting and I don't mind, I'm not gonna try and make it like a print. I don't mind if there's all bits of um, brush strokes in this background. I want the background to be very rustic and arty and artistic, okay? So that's just my vibe that I'm going for because this painting is all about the vibe. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm just using a flat brush here and just pretty much map in the background there like that getting all the ridges out and now I want to put the background color on there okay all righty down on the palette here I've just got some simple Mars black no not not Mars black it's carbon black now I'm going to get this on the flat and I'm going to crisscross this now it's going to go a bit gray I'm going to have to build up the darker colors so now what I'm doing, so as I don't get too much mismatch, it's starting to go light. I'm going to just wipe the brush, pick up more black, and start from the top again. See how it's dark again? Now that white craft paint that I put onto the canvas, that's allowing this to spread a lot easier. So I'm just going to quickly, well, not quickly, but I'm just going to artistically stroke all this black paint now you can mix up your own black have a bit of a red tinge a Payne's gray tinge I was going to use a Payne's gray but I'm just using this black for now and I'll get a, a lighter value behind the bottle as I get lower just finishing it off down here I have just gradually add a bit of water to your brush so as you'll find it's transferring from your brush onto the canvas because if you get a lot of those little white potholes coming through that's just your paint telling you uh, you need a bit more water so as I can fill those holes in if you don't I'm going to leave them behind and you'll see them like little white speckles so once you've done all this take your time to find those little white potholes and just artistically fill them in okay now what I want to do is just fix the value of this up and then i'll start adding the lighter vibe to this background which i want about around here and then very dark at the top okay so everything's still crumbly wet type of thing let's just say if i picked up a bit of the white craft white it's probably a bit too white i don't know we'll see 
get a bit going here just to see if this is going to do what I want it to do. See all those brush strokes and the marbling of it in the brush strokes? I love that. It's real arty. It's got that vibe going. And you can slowly wipe the snot off your brush like that and see the hard edge there. You can kind of blend that in a little bit more, scrumble it in, pick up some more white. I want it a lot more vibrant here as well. I'll do the other side, which is all down here. Now, I might try a bit of the titanium white out of the tube and see if that's going to work better. Because this craft point, craft, because this craft white is a lot more less density. It's not as thick and grunty. It doesn't have as much grunt as titanium white. So I'll just do this for now. But you get an idea of where the vibe's going with this. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll use um, titanium white out of the tube. It's going a bit wet, it's just wetting it up. So I'll just merge that back. Now there's a mistake I feel that I've made. You can correct yourself when you're doing this painting. So I've just washed that brush. I'm picking up the titanium white and nothing's dry on the canvas. What I'll do is I'll, I'll what do you call it, footprint. I'll create the footprint by stamping it out where I want the glare, okay? So getting it about there, nice and glary, and pretty much on this side, coming around from the bottle, and it's gonna skew out. Now that white craft paint has made it very, look at that, it's, it's mudding up, where if it was on just the, the black before I put all that white craft paint on there, it wouldn't be doing it as much. So I'm gonna have to, just muck around with that a bit. Get this crisscrossed up into that black. I'll get the glare down here. And just kind of get that artistic vibe of your glare going, what you want to happen. And it's just a matter of going backwards and forwards until you love the marriage of the couple of colors you got going here, okay? Just to show you how I got out of the mistake here, I scraped all that paint back off, you know where I put the white craft paint? I'm just redoing the, the good quality black paint over there again, like as if or so I got to that point before I put the white craft paint on. Because the white craft paint just didn't happen the way it needed to in my opinion. So we got that on there. I'm gonna wipe the brush again. Now I'll pick up the titanium white and then we'll put that all along here. Now see there, it's going to stamp the way it's supposed to, all the way down here. I want it nice and bright there, and then cascading out to a lighter value here, and then the top will gradually get darker. So that's pretty much all there. Now I'll wipe that brush again, just so as I can get all this tampered together just so it looks got that artistic brush stroke and when you're cooking in your kitchen you're just loving it there we go i've just picked up a round brush that flat one was a bit, bit awkward um, what i'm doing um, see this edge now how it's just sort of blurt blurt to that color i want to not have it so blurt blurty. I want to, like I said, we've got to get the vibe going. So I'm just turning this brush around as I do it. And I'm going to just get this, I'll wipe it. It's probably a bit too much white on there because I'll get some more black in me brush to come down. And I want to softly transition those two colors together in an artistic way, just so there's not a hard line there. It's just an artistic, um, get that craft paint off there. Just a nice look with it all and I'll use this brush as well to get the dark top area done I've done that over there now back at the top I've just I've cleaned that brush so it's not balked with white and I'm going to concentrate on getting the top very dark now and transition that down into the lighter value so I'm just coming across the top first
Now that's done as much as I want to do with the background, I'll give it a dry because I don't have to do anything else. I'm just going to mainly dry around the edge there and then I'm going to start putting the next subjects into the painting. Everything's dry enough for now. Now the next subject is the next background thing. So I want to put the chopping board on. So I'm going to paint the chopping board on and then I will put the grapes and the bottle and a bit of cheese and maybe some uh, distress in the chopping board see how I feel so I'm, I'm gonna have it like a pine chopping board type of thing so I'm gonna go for raw sienna dark which is pretty much a light color <laughs> and I've got some burnt umber there for the darker values of that so I'll get some burnt umber over there as well got a little bit of black if I need it and probably I can use some of this white to um, mix it up so I'm gonna grab a flat and I want to get the, I'll get a little bit of white into there for now, just to get this, the value that I want, a chopping board color, whatever color tickles your fancy. And the chopping board's pretty much here. So I can pretty much go around, get a little bit of water in your brush so it's gonna transfer. I'll just block it in um, there so it paid to, pencil your bottle in or whatever and we'll get this reasonable see a bit more water see how it's not filling up those potholes the two for the canvas that is there you go now it's getting in there so we'll just block this in Now I'll finish this blocking in stage with left and right strokes because that's the way I want the board to look. This way like that. Now this, this the it's blocked in. I've got to put a, a few more light and darker values into that. Now remember there's me line there where the edge of the board is. I've just mixed up a lighter value of that. Okay. And now you can tape this up here if you want just so you don't go over it. But I want to try and just freehand it. And I just want to get these this value on the board there there and pretty much along that edge there that's going to be the top edge of the board it's nice and straight straight your mate Once I do the other side, it'll be more accurate. So I'm not worried about this venturing too low behind there at the moment. I do got to put some more darker values and shadows in here as well to give the painting its full charisma. Now I'm going to grab that burn umber and we'll just see how a bit of that goes together just to get some of that raw sienna dark and some burn umber together on my flat brush. Uh, the flat brush. It's got like a nice sharp edge, so that's why I'm using a flat brush. And I want to get that edge of the board in there now. So I'll use me bullshit stick. Let's hope this is going to work this low down the canvas. We'll find out. Because I want to get that edge. Oh, I've got to get a bit lower. There we go. I'm going to, where's my edge? There it is there. And I want to get that edge nice and straight let it break don't worry that for the time being you got your edge there now this corner here i'm going to have it darker and then just fading out into some lighter shadowy so this is a shadow side here pick up some more this edge has to be quite dark along here because we need that nice and dark there. So I'll get that back. I'm pushing the edge of the brush. I'm rolling it to the edge. See as I'm rolling it, boom. See what I've done there? And I want to break up that line. There we go. Just like so. All right. 
Now I'll get a little bit darker. So I've just picked up some of the black next to the burnt umber. I left that color in the brush. So that color was already in the brush and I got the burnt umber and the black. So it's a real darker value now. And we're just gonna put some wood grain patterns in our cheese board. Okay, I'm gonna get the edge of my brush there again. Get that nice dark edge there. Just let it scratch underneath, let it fade and fall. I'll stop about there somewhere. And you'll start to see what these darker colours do. I just want to get that vibe there. It's not quite vibey enough for me. There we go. Oh. Now I'm going to get the brush on its tip and just try and make some knotty swirls come out here just like that give it a bit of a swirl somewhere I'm coming very thin at this end okay we got that there um, I'm gonna do another one so we're gonna come about here so I'm using a flat I'll come up because that's where a knot was trying to be and those of you who don't know what a knot is in a piece of wood it's where a branch was trying to grow and it did not make it so they called it a knot and we're just gonna do that detail up here nice and sharp and dark a bit fatter there because light's hitting this and refracting off it in different ways it will come along Now you can make that swirl as big or detailed as you want. I'm going to stop, load my brush up, get it on the edge and get it coming along there like that. This is working out all right. I'm feeling the vibe going on here. This one can stop about there maybe. If anything, I might come from the bottom like I did at the top see there i like that it's looking charismatic if i can get my brush in there properly or the last one here at least i'm getting just want to quickly finish these ones now i'm going to make this the part of the knot like that see what i did very thin Okay, I've, just, I've given that a light dry. Now see the top bit? We just want to highlight that. So the color which it was, I'll grab some um, titanium white because remembering the um, craft white is very watery. And I want to get a really light value of this now just for the top of the cheese board. And now I want to get probably, the grapes are here. So I want to get some light maybe refracting underneath them there from this way now I don't want to get bands of this brush like that in me painting I don't want to get that happening so I quickly moving your brush in an order so that doesn't happen okay I'll just gingerly put a bit of tape there I could have went all the way along just so as we can get a charismatic vibe of light hitting where are we i want a nice bit of brightness coming along here right up there where the i'll fix that black up pick up some more pretty much all along the edge there where your darker value is oh that cheese is going to be there so i don't have to muck too much there and look at it grab the other color if you feel it's too much and you know wherever i'm just as an example put some back here if you feel merge them together we've got those light and dark values happening now i'll just pull that tape off carefully yeah that worked good for the cheese board there 
just to give that top surface that sense of looking a bit more flat I'm just going to pick up some more white into that highlighted color and work this from the top half down but not all the way down so there we go there's our you can see my horizon line there I'm going to get this and work it over there where I wanted that bright bit and work it just so as the the closest half of it is darker than the further part of it and once we've got the bottle on there the grapes a bit of shadow casting from those picking up a darker value there um, everything will come into play you can do it you take your time you can do anything you practice what you want to paint take your time to do it you can do it I want to put my block of cheese in and then I'll work out between the bottle and the grapes which I'll do first so I'm going to just um, block it in with the light color I've got titanium white some of the raw sienna dark and I'm mixing up now that's I want it to be white but that's too so I'll grab some more over here now and start again I just want to block it in with the white or the lighter color and then the medium of the color that the cheese is going to be and then I can highlight it and dark it appropriately that's perfect for me to block it in I'm just using a flat brush so down here you can see I penciled it in and the, this is like a, a disc of cheese okay so we'll roughly get that penciled in I'm well, not penciled in blocked in from where you did the um, outline just grab my mouse stick so I'm going to use the the this brush here to get nice sharp edges this edge here can be on a bit of a beveled angle now I've dried that I've got a smaller brush now that color I just want a bit more darker so I'm going to grab the um, burned umber actually some of that burned umber I've got over here just get a little bit of it and make a darker value of this not too dark just subtle to keep that vibe going you want that vibe of the painting within it there we go and you want to kind of create where are we pretty much a different so from about here I'm going to create the the top of the disc so somewhere there and just sort of pull that down a bit I dry it it's, you can dry it more or have it a bit rubbery it's up to you just so as we're getting those scrumbly bits jingle and jangling in, into the painting there now I'll probably put just the slightest bit of darkness there but not too much that'll do how's that looking in there yes that's a bit too neat I didn't want a big neat block of cheese I wanted it real rustic looking and now come down in here and try and find some folds within the the cloth that's on the the cheese I didn't mix enough of the darker value but we'll get there if anything do them in V's and slathers like this so it's sort of creased up from the bottom and going up to there and once we highlight this and we're going to put a bit of a shadow there because see at the moment there's no shadow there and it looks a bit mm, something's not quite right there that's because the shadows aren't there now with that darker color that I mix with some burn number I'm going to grab some more burn number into it I want a real darker value because I want to sit it down onto the cheese board now it's not quite sitting down and see where the cheese is sit it down come across here come up like so and I want to get this darker here I'm using a smaller flat brush here just my preference and then this bit of the shadow 
I just want to blend out like so just so it looks a bit photographic practice scrumbling if you've never done it before there's so many things you can practice in your art journey now I've grabbed some black and that burnt umber just to make a really dark burnt umber and find the edge of the cheese and get this you don't want it like a black line how's that looking that's okay and we can try and scramble to that but if you feel you've done too much dark here you can always get that burned umber and simply put it back Let's grab a bit of the medium tone brown just to put a bit of light here I don't know is that going to do anything yeah that's sort of all right now just to finish that cheese off we get this the the starting color which was here I'll pull a bit over here like so using the same brush now what I'm going to do is just grab titanium white and slowly mix that color into some titanium white you don't want a pure white and I want to get this cheese now right at the very top kiss them against that dark color and I want this faded down with the brighter color and we're going to continue get this over some of the dark bits in the middle there just to highlight the um, creases within the cheesecloth if you can I'm just trying to do my best here and that's all you can do as well just do your best and the more you do things you do get better at them the shiny bit coming off there I just want to look in my monitor see how that's looking it's kind of looking like cheese wrapped in a cloth I feel that's the vibe you're going for it's the vibe you got when someone's looking at it they're going to know it's cheese wrapped in cloth they're not going to think oh, is that a spider or a frog now that I've finished this I've got me bottle and me grapes I'm going to level it straighten it up I'm going to block all this in now and the grapes just with the white craft paint so as I've got a primer to put my colors on I'm just going to grab my flat brush and pick up the craft paint and I can see where it needs get this why I'm using the flat brush I'm going to level this up now just detail this bottle now Okay, I've primed the bottle in. What I'm going to do is just grab a pouncer for the grape size and grabbing the same craft paint just to prime in where I'm going to paint the grapes. Because for me, this is just going to give all the paint something to sit on. So I'm mainly using this just to give my circles where I want them to be. Something like that. I'm twisting it in to get the paint grinded off the pouncer and on to the canvas. And then once this is all blocked in, I'll start putting the colors in and they'll go backwards and forwards from each other. My left, there we go. Nice and quick. Put it in there like that. Now I've dried this with your rendition. Work out if your grapes are going to be behind your bottle or in front. And I've almost made a mistake here. I think I can get away with it. But see the plane of the cheese board 
and then the top of the cheese because I've I've referenced this from a separate picture from the bottle and you don't want your plane of your cheese board this way and the top of your cheese that way where they're clashing so make sure that would match the top of your I could make this a bit more broader out there so they're on the same plane but be aware of that okay I feel I'm gonna have to bring this black down because this bit of the cheese board looks a bit up but so be it now I'm going to put the grapes on first and I want to get my darker colors going and then slowly bring the brighter colors through now down here I've got some permanent alindrin and a really dark perylene green uh, to make my very dark so I'm going to gradually add the dark perylene green to this permanent alindrin I want it darker than that very dark get my darker color and then I'll make a brighter value of this as I come forward and to me this is just my um, if you could see on that white this is my dark grape color now I'll grab my pouncer again I've cleaned it and I've just got to go and color in pounce in all the dark grapes that I want to be this color so pretty much all the bottom can you see there yet so I'm gonna come to here and get it under the white prime surface there just like so I'll just do circles like this so I can see each to be individual grape now if you don't have a pouncer don't panic just get yourself one off you just don't have one just you can make one or just use a brush take your time there's no rush I'm just using a pouncer because I've got it I'm gonna have some probably green ones there so maybe from about here what I will do just so I don't get too much of the purple on the bottle I've just put some mask and tape there and get this a little bit damp a bit of a spray just so it's gonna transfer off here better because I want some green ones up there so I'm gonna sort of radiate these ones from about there and the rest can be green okay so now that's where I want to stamp all my purple grapes I might need which I feel I do a darker value of this again just to get it right against the bottle there I want it nice and dark so I'm just going to dab all this in now grind them into there so I could see where I'm going or different behind and in fronts everywhere there we go now I'm getting that brilliant green and the uh, permanent lindrum but a darker value again just because where the side of my bottle is I want some darker but I'm going to dry it first see it's not really sticking properly okay I've got a lighter green a sap green here I want to block in the grapes now I'm not going to use a pouncer because they're going this it'll go all over those other ones there so I'll just get these blocked in like so over all the white and so on because these are going to be uh, I want to get some yellow light cadmium yellow light and change some of these up as well now I've got some cad yellow light I'm going to wet that a bit so it's not so like that ish let's say here so I'll work out I might just have a little bit of this hitting with the light okay just like that beautiful you've got to keep loading your brush and taming the paint to the edge you want and I want to bring this grape pretty much in front of that one and I'm not going to go for much realism here I'm just going to go for effective visuals out, final visual outlooks on this painting so when you just look at it it just looks it's it'll have its own look and people can see that it's grapes and a bottle of wine and whatever 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 um, another one here so this is where you put things in front and behind each other now I didn't really dry it so I'll keep playing with it get this one here 
now. I, I really should have, could have practiced doing some grapes, but I'm just using the basic fundamentals of art here. I've given that a light dry and I'm going to grab some of this colour just so in between these greens I can get some more darks where I feel it might need to sit and then I can really finish it off with the appropriate highlights. got that same brush I cleaned this color we mixed up here I'm grabbing a little bit of that with some more cadmium yellow light just so I can get a real lemony greeny limey color here just something to highlight but oh look at that I didn't wash my brush properly I've got to wash that dark color out of it and I'm going to look at my grapes and kind of work out where I want this color on them try and keeping them the round shape not too much yellow because I want to get a bit of white with this as well so bits of that dark color we can kind of just do this and I want to get a, yeah, a bit of white highlight into this as well try and make them real greeny transparent -y looking if I can get it I doubt I will but that's what I want to go for so I'm pretty much just doing this now I'm grabbing this darker color with a little bit of a white in it and I want to give you know how some of the green grapes where are we they sort of have this color going through them so i'm going to destroy that yucky edge and try and create a real edge where it's meeting the background because i looked in the monitor and i wasn't quite happy with some of the edges there put that there so how i'm going to do it this uh, mix that we got here which was a permanent linser and, and a bit of that um, green the dark green remember i made a darker value of it this one here I want to grab that just with some of the craft paint and then start getting this value and putting it where I feel I need it so I want to leave some really dark ones back there and I'll start getting like that one there that one there this one this one uh, he can stay under there a bit a bit like there a bit like there but now i want to put a big one there and these circles are just going to make up each individual grape i'll get these bottom ones in and then i might have to put something back over them I want to have a little bit of the you know how grapes are on a bit of a stick I want to have a bit of a stick running through it as well now I'll do the rest with me brush just so as I can keep my eye on it all I'm just grabbing my script liner I want to grab this color green I've been spraying this with water periodically so they're not skinning up on me and I want to grab this color and once this is put in we can sink it back as well so I'll probably come from behind the bottle and now I want to twist it, give it a bit of a node coming down there. I'll load it up a bit more, make sure I've got no paint on my hands. And 
and it will be pushed behind the grapes there. Probably put the slightest little thing there. That's it. Now I've dried everything. I'm gonna sink that little branch down. I'm gonna detail these purple ones and then bring the odd green one, like I said, just rolling in front of it. So down here we've got, I need a bit more of this real darker value now, just to get in between all that lighter ones that I sponged on with the pouncer. And we wanna work out, or I'll, I'll, first I'll put this in front of that and get some where are we let's i'll just work from the top bits here get them like that somehow uh we'll put this one in front as well right there in front of that branch so we're going to sink that branch back so he's gone through the grapes I'll look in my monitor in a minute. I just want to get a bearing of where I'm going with this. Now I've just put some permanent alinsarin onto the palette there and I've picked up a little bit of white and I'm trying to get the, if anything, the see through -y color of that purple color within the grape. Dry it if you need be. Um, don't want it everywhere, probably a little bit there. I'll do a little bit and have a look in my monitor to see if it's doing the thing that I want it to do. Uh, sort of is. A bit of it over here maybe. Mm. Coming off, maybe a little bit hitting the light there a bit. Is that working? Give me some comments below and tell me if you think I'm doing a good job, a great job, or a half-baked job, or yeah, it's all right, Ian, you're winning. Just tell me if I'm winning or losing or struggling. It's always nice to get feedback from the other side of my channel there. Uh, now I've grabbed that dark green, the pyrrhylene green, and I've put a bit of white with it. Just so as I can get that um, distinct, dusty, deep, purpley colour on some of the bottoms of these here. Like so. Just to make up the values. I think I've buggered that bit there up. I'll have to fix that up. That's okay. But yeah, I'm getting... That'll do it. And just to finish them off, I've grabbed that sap green and I want to sit some of the green ones down. So I'll put this green one right in front of there and then I'll highlight him appropriately as well. And this, because at the moment, there's probably some of you out there looking, something's not quite right with that bunch of grapes, Ian. And I, I hear you, I feel you, I know what you're thinking, and that's what this, hopefully, what I'm doing now is going to do. It's going to relieve you of that annoying feeling. Here we can put maybe this one... Dropping in front, hopefully. Just paint the whole thing in and you can highlight it accordingly. And now I'll just highlight these little green ones and that's the end of the grapes. Just grabbing that highlight colour that I had for the purple ones, sort of coming from the back of it and pointing into the middle of it there, sort of like that. Just here and there, the light hitting some of them. And a bit of it into the dark colour. That one looks too much like a line there. I'll distort that a bit more. Mm. Ah. Now 
I'll take the tape off and I want to put the shadow. So I'm grabbing that dark color, the green that I mix with that permanent alindrin. I'll probably come across there to the grapes and then wiggle it, try and get some shadowy effects coming around down about there. I want the edges quite broken up. I'll do a bit there first. Shadow it in. I didn't have my microphone plugged in earlier. The sound probably sounded a bit different. So I just want to get this there. Just wear me grapes, like I got one here. I don't want much on me brush. Just a little bit of highlight, just to sort of indicate the grape and the shadow. Did that make sense? I was just looking at it, and I think I might just grab a little butt of the um, stem poking out into the darkness there from there as well to me great cutoffs have a little bit of a node there I suppose little bits of blobs on them I've got my perlene green and the cadmium yellow medium I've just mixed up a dollop there because I want to just map in on the bottle where all the light and dark areas are and I'm going to use this instead of a pencil so I'll start from the top and I want to um, try and get uh, I'll do this for the let's say the the darker area of the bottle I'm going to come down as well and then we'll put the appropriate lights and darks where we need to gotta to remember to move that camera the label will be there thank god I don't have to I've got a label there be here done where the cork now you can have, I suppose you can have your cork popping out of this as well if you want to have a cork stuck in there. It's up to you and your imagination. So this is going to be all dark in there, dark glass. It's going to be glass, wine bottle glass, oh yeah. Running out of that paint I mixed up. Dark all the way down there and all the way down this little skimmy bit here and it's important to get our lights where they've got to go so I've got me cad yellow here I'm, I'm going to use all that much bugger it and I'll grab that green I don't want too much let's just see how we go first wet your brush yeah this is bright enough and now I'm going to block in the whole bottle with this and then I will highlight it and any little darker flicks that need in it here and there appropriately and it's going to sit on there alright because I've painted that bottle white in the beginning so let's get all this in between all that darker colour that I did put there just to a degree I'll come back with that other colour to really finesse it but give this some respect putting this on color get not color in listen to me paint in all those teeth in the canvas so none of them are sticking out 
and what we're doing we're pretty much painting this to that darker color I put on there well that's what I'm doing that's what's going through my mind said Caroline and it'll start looking like a bottle of wine or a, an empty bottle of wine because I chose an empty bottle why because it's just easier <laughs> but this is a fun exercise still life I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this I am enjoying this painting so we're coming down here there's this label so Where's my label? There's my label there. I don't want to paint all this green under the label because the label's going to be a light colour. I'm just going to map the rest of it in all this colour and then I'll paint the darks and lights over it accordingly. So to the early advanced beginner it might look a bit oh she's a bit rough Ian but that's okay because we're roughing it in still we're still well I'm still roughing it in there will be <laughs> scurries of this throughout that bit of the bottle as well now we've got that green I'm getting the, a very dark value of that now just with what's left in the brush so we got one two three Dave Steve's in here there's Steve Steve there you go mate now you can draw your subject I want to get the darker values in now I thought this was um, too dark but it's not as dark as I want it but we'll get there scrumbling around there come on change it to a bigger flat because I found that one was just not cut the mustard enough for me and get that cut right in on top of the cheese board there so it's not got a white line between it now you can probably find a picture of a wine bottle it can be any wine bottle and make a traceable for it. I was going to and I thought, no, nah, I'm just going to freehand it. I don't care if it's a little bit wonky. One of my um, subscribers was begging me and begging me to do this painting and I'm well, not begging, but just constantly asking. And I was like, yeah, I've got to get around to that. It's just getting around to it. And I'm slowly getting around to it, as you can see. Um, but I haven't done any still life, so this is well called for. So I'm getting all this dark in. Done that. Now I'm going to grab this one again and start pushing it where I want it a bit more. Neatening it up. This is what starts bringing the, um, the puppy home. Now I haven't dried it. I'll see if I need to. I might need to, we'll see how we go. Got to get all this nice and condensed. I'll just show you what I mean. I've kept the um, darker brush going. So this can merge with that wetter, lighter color there. There we go. 
something like that. And now I'll continue with my light colour where I want it to go. See? And then see the first coat of that, how it looks all gummy and see throughy and that. You, you're going to start fixing all that up as well. Oh, here. I'm just putting this in here. So we want that glaring up from there. Probably want a little bit of. Um, Coming off that peak, I'll look at that later and see which way I can go with that. But yeah, I'll work that out. And up here. And there's even going to be some lighter values in this to really make it pop and crack and come home as well. I've got some white edging there I've got to really cover up and back in there. so you might see bits done off camera that's because I could be here for a month of Sundays going backwards and forwards with the light and dark colors but you get the gist of what I'm doing with this bottle come back to here and get the vibe of that going up in there as well Maybe I'm using the wrong brush, but I'll try my best. Get the softness there. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the titanium white. It should mix with that light color in the bottle. If not, I'll have to taint it with some of that color because I don't want it pure white. And we'll start from, say, here. And when I do the... Um, Cut it in with the background into it sharp again because I have lost a lot of the um, sharp edge. And see here, we want to get this nice. Try and get this in a nice full manner, not all jingly jaggly over the place. Because I want this. I'll get some more of my brush. I want this to come. I'm going to get my brush. I'll let the brush do the work for me. All the way down there. Bang. We'll get a little bit of that sort of coming here as well. This is the actual glass that we're painting now. We could probably even have a bit there, so I might have a bit on this. <laughs> get a bit neater. There we go, just in front of all of that. Just sit that base down a bit. Is that working, people? over this side now so where are we this little brush is so hard to get the paint on it the way you want where are we there I want to come down there right over that black bit right there where are we I just grabbed the darkest color off the palette there and I just want to kind of if I can get this I want to kind of the slightest darkness under here and just a minimal shadow if I can so start from here if we can there we go this will sit the glass onto the wooden palette wooden palette not a palette yeah it's a palette Grab a little bit of white. I'll just see if I can put it. I'll take it away if I feel. I just feel a bit of light needs to be hitting the edge of this cheese board here. Just within the shadow. Just going to map in the label now with some white.
and a little bit of raw sienna dark just to taint that white and let's hope i don't mark anything i want to try and get a reasonably good oval shape on here up there cover all your bits and pieces get that a little bit on the damp side and that's going to come all the way around here and up. Now when we write on the label, we've got to re remember that the bottle's curved, so we've got to try and put the writing in a curved manner as well, okay? So I'm just going to map all this in first in this colour. Those big blobs of paint there. Get out of here, you dog. Just finishing and blocking this label in. And then we'll work out what we want to write on it. So it's going to be my name and birth year, bottle of wine, Eonapolis wine. Now, I've drawn my name on there. I got, let's hope I got the right brush. I just got raw sienna dark with some white mixed in it a bit just to make it a bit more opaque and we'll try and get my name in here reasonably sharp uh, probably a good thing for this which I don't have would be an appropriate colored paint pen I'm gonna just write it on here but when the camera's off I'll detail it more but I want to paint it on there I don't want to have it just penned in there and I'm hoping I've got it within perspective of the bottle. Now I'm calling it here Cotes de Dura, it's French. It's a, and it's a region <laughs> yeah, it's in a region. It's a, it, 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 it is a region affiliated of the Dura Rhine region of East France. And yeah, I'll get that in there. Yeah, it was when was it? It was introduced about 1937, and it's easily the region's largest affiliated in terms of geographical scope as well. It's the Dura region, all right. So the Jura is a region where they do the wine and um, quantitatively it's the second most imported wine from that region after the uh, Aboa region. Now there we go, we've got that there. And I'm going to do a little sort of thing here, just a drawing of a grapevine. Um, I'll put the year, so this bottle's a 1964. I'm just getting it on there. I'll fix the writing up later. And it'll probably have all lots of little writing here. You know, like blah, 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 blah. All that blah, blah writing. And over here is just a, like a branch. of um, a grapevine just in the bottle's logo. Now all I'm doing here before I finish it off is getting a darker value of that paint and then just sharpening it up, giving it some shadow, just a bit of charisma. 
don't forget these grapes as well, give them a bit of oomph. And there's a bit of mumble jumble writing up there as well. Same with the bottom down here, whatever. I'll just sign it down here, nice and gingerly. Now check out the links in the description below. I want to thank all my patrons who support me every month. Much appreciated. And if you want to become a patron, simply hit the link below. Uh, there's a link to my art group, Ianapolis Art Network. Request to become a member there. Tell me you saw me on YouTube and I'll accept you into the group. There's lots of links there. Get familiar with what they are. All right, let's whack a frame on that. There we go. That's not too shabby, is it? We've got some still life, a bottle of wine, some cheese, and some grapes on a cheese board there. It's not set properly there, but there you go. That's what she looks like. And just remember, you can do that. All right, I had a lot of fun painting this painting today, something different. And if you like what you saw today, you make sure you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya!